What is up, friends? You are watching Doug V Carburetor. My name is Doug. Ooh, buddy, and that is a carburetor. Specifically, this is a Tecumseh carburetor off an eight horsepower snowblower. What I wanna to do today is talk about these carburetors. There is an unpleasant conversation that's been a long time coming, and it's time we just go for it. Let's talk about the truth about these carbs. All right, friends, one of the most ubiquitous engines in the United States, at least, are the Tecumseh flathead engines that have been popular since the 1960s. They put them in everything, but they're best known for their use in snow blowers, which is why I love Tecumseh flathead so much. If you don't know me, I love snar blowers, the old digit deleters. What I'm holding here is the carburetor from an eight horsepower Tecumseh off of an eight horsepower uh, snowblower. This is from the probably early 80s. It is an adjustable carburetor. Right here you have an idle circuit adjustment. Right there you have a main jet adjustment. So if it's running a little rough, you can get down there and tickle her a bit and dial her right in. Conversely, off the Slamazon, picked up for 20 American doll hairs. I got this guy. It was actually made by Al Pacino. Hua! Hua! Didn't know Al Pacino made carburetors, but. These kits are not even 20 bucks. I think this one was $14. Look at this, new fuel line and new primer line. Uh, this is a uh, fuel filter, really cheap one at that, but it's better than nothing. Here's your new primer bulb. Here's your new petcock for your fuel shut off. $14, by the way. Here is your new choke knob. And here is your new throttle knob. I mean, you're rebuilding an old damn blower at that point. And then here's your carburetor. Well, first, you got a gasket, one gasket. And these are for holding the fuel line on. I mean, everything you could possibly need. And then the icing on the cake is this beautiful little doll right there, right? Well, you might be noticing right off the hop, some things are a little bit different. Most notably, where this one, this is your 80s, 70s, 60s, whatever, pre, I call them the pre-solid jet. We'll talk about that in a, morning, but in a minute. But these are the pre-solid jets, the adjustable ones. I told you already, this is your idle circuit setup right there, right? Well, the ones you get on Amazon and the ones you get on newer Tecumsehs, and I haven't been able to nail down the date that they changed. One of y'all might know, because um, you, you know you just have been in it for so long. Let me know, what year did they change? As far as I can tell, they used the adjustables on and off. Like if you got an expensive machine, maybe you'd got like a Simplicity or an Arians, maybe you'd get an adjustable. And if you got an MTD or a yard machine or a Craftsman, you'd probably get one of these. From around the mid nineties up until about 2005, anything after 2005 is gonna have these on them. Now, no adjustment there. And this bottom jet is solid. Remember I told you it was a solid, uh, solid jet. There's no adjustment there. This jet has one setting and what it is, it is. Now, guys like me for years have been disparaging these because why wouldn't you want an adjustable carburetor? Why wouldn't you want control over what you're doing, right? Now, I should say, and let's just cut this tree down right now. These carbs are, they're great for what they are. Uh, you, you buy them off Slamazon. I've bought a number of these either because I had a machine that didn't have a carburetor or the reason I bought this one is this carburetor, it defeated me. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, I don't often get defeated and I even rarely, even more rarely admit that I got defeated, but I'm here to tell y'all I got defeated. But we'll talk about that in a moment. These carburetors right here are actually really good. You pull them right out of the box and even with all this mainland communist, I mean, you know, this thing smells like uh, low main. Uh, you know where this thing came from and all this cheap communist crap here, but how, how can you beat it? $14 shipped to my door off the Slamazon. If you're not like me, meaning I have an ultrasonic cleaner and an irrational uh, desire to clean old carburetors all the day. If you're not, this is a perfect solution for you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is this is actually a perfect solution for me too. Here's why. Breaks my heart to do this. this, is a hard conversation to have. But the reason these carburetors were adjustable, aside from the fact that men were just made better back then and knew how to adjust a carburetor, is that they had to be. Fuel was inconsistent. It wasn't as good as it is today. Now that's a weird thing to hear me say, right? Because I have been on record in probably every video on this channel complaining about the state of fuel today. The problem with fuel today is they put ethanol in it, uh, which breaks down into water. It breaks down into water starts breaking down in about a month. After three months, you probably have bad gas. If you leave it in there uh, from year to year, you know, from fall to fall or something, you're almost definitely gonna have a problem. 
That is what I mean when I say gas today sucks, but the reality is the quality, the purity, and the consistency of it is way, way better than it was when this thing was designed, which is probably, uh, let's see, what's the earliest I've ever seen? I have a 1964 outboard that has an identical carburetor to this, almost identical. It's identical for all intents and purposes. So they've been using this style since like 1964. Gas was still leaded. Um, to put something else into perspective, that 1964 outboard I have calls, it, the, the manual uh, tells me I have to run 12 to one, because it's two stroke, 12 to one is crazy. And I did some research online, I was like, Jesus, they really want me to run 12 to one in this thing? I feel like I'm gonna be fouling out plugs left and right. And everybody on the forums agreed, from service text down to your uncle, your uncle Bumblefork, uh, that oil was just crap in the 60s. The reality is, these run just fine. Not once have I ever put one of these on, this breaks my heart to tell you, and been like, man, I wish it was adjustable. I needed to run just a little bit better. No, Tecumseh figured out, oh, you got an eight horsepower? This is the size jet you need. Done, cut that tree down. Now, guys like me are gonna continue running this, and I'll tell you one reason I do like this, and maybe it's just in my own head, but when it's really cold, I mean, it's like negative 10, I like to be able to adjust my carb a little bit. Do I need to? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Probably not, because that's this is what they're putting on new units, you know, but guys like me are gonna continue to chase these down. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop disparaging guys like you, if you're one of those guys, who don't wanna deal with it. I don't wanna tune this thing. And the fact of the matter is this, when I put one of these carbs on, I do need to tune it a little bit. I got um, I got Olaf and, uh, what's his name, uh, old Grinch over there, drying out so I can put them away. What was I saying? Uh, when I put one of these adjustable Tecumseh carburetors on, I, do, I have to adjust it. I know I'm gonna have to. I walk outside with my tiny screwdriver because I've put this at one and a half out and this at three quarters out, and that's close. It's good enough to get it running, but it, it's not dialed in. You guys have seen me and do it in other videos. You've seen, uh, you know who's great with snar blowers? Um, what's his damn name? He's a French Canadian, I think. Donnie Boy, right? Donnie Boy 70, whatever it is, 76, 79, 74, 73, I don't know. It's Donnie Boy 70 something. Learned a lot from you, Donnie Boy, I appreciate that. So what I'd like to know here, this, this video was uh, more conversational than informational. Usually on this channel, I try to just do work and stuff, but I really wanted to talk about this because for a long time, I was a snob about these carburetors and I've come to terms with the fact that this is a good unit. I'm gonna throw this on and had I not decided to make a video tonight, I would have spent about 10 minutes in the garage. The other thing, in case you're wondering, yes, they're identical. Uh, the mounting points are all identical. I mean, they are they are really good good carburetors. I bought a number of different ones from the Chinese, uh, and this Hua, Hue, Highway, Hua. I mean, they try to tell me they're not a, a mainland communism, but who's gonna sell? How are you gonna make a fourteen dollar carburetor for fourteen dollars if you're not a freaking communist, right? Um, so that's all there is to it. Uh, I'd love to know from you guys, what do you think about these adjustable carbs? I know plenty of people that actively avoid them because they don't know how to mess with them. You know, I, I do, you probably do, most of my friends do because that's how we, you know, that's the type of dudes we are. But the fact of the matter is maybe just set it and forget it. Maybe this is the way to go. What do you guys think? Clearly this is the future. Another thing, another reason that these are around forever and you're never gonna get your adjustables back is these are set uh, for emissions. They, get, they give out a certain amount of emissions, and I, you know that's just now small engine emissions is becoming a bigger deal, and I think in the next few years we're all gonna have to hear about it quite a lot. So w without making this video 18 years long, let's cut it here, but I would like to know from you guys, what do you think? When you get a used snowblower, a used piece of power equipment, or your own piece of power equipment, uh, isn't starting first pull, second pull, third pull, nothing, what do you do? Slamazon, $14 carburetor, or uh, head out to the garage and clean it up the way granddaddy would. Y'all know which I do, and you know which I'm gonna continue to do, but I recognize this This is viable. Another thing this doesn't have is the dump. That really bums me out, man. That is a good feature, especially on a snowblower. Uh, Cause you, you use a snowblower, especially here in Jersey, man. Listen, if you live up in uh, Winter Peg, man, I told you, you're using that snowblower every day, maybe. If you live up in Maine or in the Lake Effect, uh, Buffalo, New York, fine. Here in Jersey, my simplicity over there, I used it once. It's the middle of February. I don't know, maybe I'll use it two more times. Uh, having that dump is a beautiful thing. I dump that, now the carburetor's empty. It's not gonna get filled with tater tots. Anyway, let me have a comment down in the squawk boxes. As always, thanks for watching.
See you next time. I promise the next video will be back to working. This is a working channel, not a talking channel. We just had to cover this real quick.